to hold this, you say your names and where you're from. I'm Ina and I'm from Minneapolis. I'm Lily and I'm from St. Paul. On today's show, Stephanie Hansen is canning. <laughs> and music critic John Bream. And the only thing cooler than an IC is Jason. He's super cool. You guys meant that like you're super cool? <laughs> Alright, say roll the open. Oh, roll the open. Here we go. Have a seat, save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch, so let's just say that. Yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. And welcome to our special second hour of the Jason Show live on this Monday, on this day five of the Minnesota State Fair. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. To our Minnesota audience, thank you for being here. I'll say it every day. This second hour is a love letter, a thank you from us to you. Without the Minnesota audience, our Wisconsin friends, the Jason Show wouldn't be national, so I, I appreciate you guys so much. So the second hour uh, is really great because we can focus on some local, uh, and we're going to do it today. We have some local businesses we want to spotlight. It's always been one of my favorite things about our show, and we can really do it in this second hour. Now, Fallon is uh, busy doing her radio gig, so she'll be uh, joining us again uh, on the very last day, and of course, when we go back to the studio for season 10, but... But when we needed when we needed a sidekick for this special Minnesota hour, I thought we need a Minnesota icon. And we found one. She's a radio icon from Lori and Julie on My Talk 1071. Give it up for Woo! Lori Margini, everybody. Look at you. Look at, Look at you. I brought my own thatched shade <laughs> today. I just got a palapa on my head. You look how good you look. The well, heat thank is you. you everybody else all the crew we're all sweating. You look as fresh as a daisy. Well, thank you. And these polyester shirts are not easy to breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, there's no breath. <laughs> I'll I'll let Fox know. I'll get you better shirts next year. Uh for people that do not know, well, first of all, let me tell you where we are. If you want to come see us, uh, we'll put up a map. Here's a map right here. If you're coming down to the Minnesota State Fair, remember, you don't need a ticket to the Jason Show. You just need a ticket to the State Fair. Here we are. We're right by the giant slide right there. You cannot miss us. Uh, Dan Patch, Judson, we're right there. So please come see us again all through the fair. So four more shows after this. We are live for two hours. So come down and see us. And you do, yeah, the crew ain't clapping today, let me tell you. <laughs> Why can't we be an hour? Anyway, um, so come down and see us sometime this week. Okay, if you don't know this about Lori, one of the things I love because it's a deficiency of mine, I'm not a big live music person, but my friend Lori right there, you love live music. You yes. crave live music, and you especially love live music at, at the fair. Where were you this weekend? Uh, well, last night it was at Blake Shelton. Woo! And let me tell you, he had a hot gal, Emily something. She was on The Voice. She was really in charming, and she's going places. She, she is. She was really good. Blake came out at 8.02. He wanted to be done real early. He was done at 9.15. What? I've never seen the fireworks go off at 9.20. That was it? But he was fun as heck. He played for whatever, you know, that amount of time is. Don't make me do math right Don't, now. I won't make you do math, love. Um, but he had a velvet long sleeve shirt on and he was dripping sweat and we were vicariously dripping with him because the <laughs> camera is right there and it's pouring <laughs> off of him. It's pouring. how you feel in that Fox polyester shirt right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and Gwen did not come out but a beautiful video of her face and the track of her singing, whatever that, I couldn't name you one Blake Shelton song, okay? Yeah, but I you had a good time. Oh, it was so much fun and there were country hotties and cuties everywhere. So that was nice for Good the eye eyes. candy. I heard I it got really great reviews. And speaking of reviews, our buddy John Bream, legendary 
uh, Minnesota Star Tribune music reviewer, will be joining us a little later talking with uh, Lori and myself. But right now, no matter what hour it is, we always start the show with the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Let's get to some hot topics, shall we, for the 11 a.m. hour? Attention share. Listen up, Cindy Lauper, and pay attention, Elton John. One big name music star, speaking of music, is really tired of hearing about your so called farewell tours. The boss, Bruce Springsteen, called out farewell tours during a concert stop in Philadelphia a few nights ago. He told the crowd, I will never, he said, do a farewell tour, saying he's been on the road for 50 years and never plans to stop. Never plans to stop. <clears throat> uh, Springsteen and the E Street Band are currently on the final leg of their stadium tour. By the way, that one runs through November, followed by more European dates in 2025. And get this, the 74-year-old Springsteen has been touring for the past 52 years. 52 years. Look, Lori, I... I I value your opinion on this because you are a music fan. I actually agree with Bruce. I, I love her, but I always roll my eyes, especially with Cher, because everything, every tour of hers is a farewell tour. How many times can you leave? Well, you get, here's the thing. It just goes to show you rockers never retire. They have no reason to retire. They have the best job in the world because they can take two years off in between tours. Yeah, and he I said mean, this, Lori. And I think you'll agree. He said, don't call it farewell or a goodbye tour. Just go on tour, and if it happens to be your last, it's your last, right? I, I agree. I mean, this is the Rolling Stones. They're having more fun than they've ever had, and those guys are 80. They are rocking it. Why should they retire? Lori, have you ever seen the Stones? Um, several times, darling. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen Bruce? So many times, <laughs> yes. And then, you know, the first time I went to a Bruce concert, I thought, why are they booing him? Because everybody goes, Bruce, Bruce. And I just thought, well, that is the rudest thing ever. And, <laughs> and then someone said, oh, no, this is what happens at a Bruce Springsteen. They yell Bruce, not boo. Well, we're going to stick uh, <laughs> stick with music next in the dish. Motley Crue is hitting the State Fair Grandstand on Thursday night. And the legendary rock band is making news today because they remade one of their 80s classic, look, the classics. Okay, I should have said the Beastie Boys. They, Motley Crue, I got mixed up. Motley Crue is remaking a Beastie Boys That's classic. Right. Okay, so that is Motley Crue's version of the Beastie Boys' Fight for Your Right. This is part of an upcoming three-song EP. When was the last time we heard EP? Coming out in October. Now, odds are local fans will be hearing that song when Motley Crue hits the grandstand on Thursday. Are you... Again, Lori is a frequent fair concert goer. Yeah. Are you, are you doing Motley Crue? I'm not going to that one, even though I have a soft spot for Tommy Lee, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Um, a little pun there. Sorry. If, their kids, if the kids were in the audience, I'd ask you about that. But, you know, we got to keep this. Do you like Tommy Lee? I, I do, and I've seen them in concert. I saw them with poison. I've seen them several times, and they are, they're fun, and the crowd watching is spectacular. Lori, what's one of the crazy, I got to ask, what's, I don't know this, but what's not necessarily because of what was happening on stage, what's, if you can think, pluck, pluck out of your memory, what's one of the craziest concerts you've ever been to? You know, the Kid Rock Leonard Skinner at the Grandstand, it's the only time I've seen a line in the men's room all <laughs> over the place. That crowd was 90% guys, and then 10% stripper, used to be a stripper, wants to be a stripper. <laughs> That was a crazy crowd. Uh, were you counting the strippers? Uh, it's a kid rock game you can play if you go to a show. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be a stripper, wants to be a stripper, is a stripper. <laughs> well, we'll do that a little bit later. Okay. Not with this audience. We okay. won't do that to you guys. Yeah, up next uh, in the dish, we were all shocked, saddened. I know Lori was heartbroken to hear about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck calling it quits. Hmm. Well, maybe not. Again. But now the gloves may be coming off a little bit in their pending divorce. So remember that documentary 
this is what I mean. That the couple did on Prime Video earlier this year. It was called The Greatest Love Story Never Told. Ay, ay. And documented their relationship and JLo's work to create a new album. Well, a headline on People Magazine says the doc was all Ben's idea and he had control of the whole thing. That actually is a surprise since anyone who watched the movie saw, uh, saw Ben looking bothered and surprised that he was even part of it. Sources say Affleck wanted to control the narrative of the movie. Does this surprise you, Lori? Uh, please. This is PRT right from J-Lo's People to People magazine. That She is telling her side of the story so she doesn't get blamed so much. Are you... The reports are, too, that they're already dating. They're already, like, he's... He's involved with Kit Kennedy. At least they've gone to the polo lounge at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is a place to be seen. You've been there. I love that place. <laughs> Donna Mills, call me. <laughs> or someone that looked like Donna right. Mills was with you at but the you polo. But you don't go to the polo lounge without knowing you will be spotted. That's a known place well, to see and be seen. But don't you think, Lori, too, real quick before we go to break... It's new. It's not new to them, meaning they've been separated since April. So it's, yes. everyone's like, oh, they're already mm -hmm. seeing somebody. No, they've been separated since April. It's been a long time. He's ready. Yeah. Yeah. J-Lo needs to be married to herself for yeah. like a year. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we have a lot more to come on this uh, very steamy second hour <laughs> of the show. Back right after this, everybody. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're to our special second hour of the Jason Show. Well, you can bring many things home with you after visiting the State Fair. From free swag, Jason Show sunglasses, giant stuffed animals, to a stomach ache from too much food. But how about taking home a beautiful piece of art? Uh, again, this is why I love doing this second hour. We can do stuff like this. One booth in the Westin Market is known for their colorful, one-of-a-kind pieces of art from local artists. Joining me is the woman behind Cream of the Crop Artist Gallery. Give it up for Jeannie Castro, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? I am doing well. Okay, really so good. what? It, describe, I kind of did it there a little bit in the intro, but the uh -huh. heat's getting to me, so I don't know what I read. <laughs> right. uh, what? Describe a little bit of what the, uh, the collective's really all about, what people can find there. So it's a colorful art gallery that features Minnesota artists, Western Wisconsin artists, and um, we've all made a bunch of really great new stuff for the fair. We're excited to be here. What made you want to do this? Uh, it was an idea, and um, I used to come to the fair with my grandmother when I was five, and um, I just love the Minnesota State Fair. Okay. Uh, well, and then this started how, uh, several years ago, right? Yes. Okay. I think we're in our ninth year. A ninth year. And what yeah. has the response been like? Very positive. Uh, we have repeat customers that keep coming back year after year and loving it, saying that this is their favorite booth. And it <laughs> is. I pass it up. It yeah, super dig it. And the, yeah, the Western Market. If you guys uh, haven't been, it's so it's so great. Uh, lots of great stuff. We got remodeled about five or six years ago. Okay, let's go through uh, some of the stuff. What do we? Let's do a little visual tour. What do we have down here, Jeannie? Let me switch places with you. Okay, we have some wallets made with vintage. Um, magazine pieces. Okay. And a, this gal is new to the booth. She's nostalgic darling. Okay. okay. And then Brooke made some coasters that are <laughs> <laughs> uh, rug, rug coasters. So it's a little burger you can put on your um, thing. And then you can address or, you know, put your onions on there, lettuce, <laughs> tomato, uh, different kinds of cheeses. We have Marble Jack, Swiss, wow. burger, it's and the burger It's a multiple bun. cheese situation. Yeah. So yeah, these are coasters. I love that. <laughs> what? I've been looking at this. What is this? This is a cat baby, and <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a what? <laughs> it's a cat baby. <laughs> um, is that a human head on a cat body, Jeannie? It is, and this is a creative. Creativity runs in our family, and my son is an artist. So this I, is created by Paco Castro. I. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. I, 
<laughs> it is art. It is. It is. I, I, I got to tell you, here at the booth, I thought the most interesting thing. We have a fake monkey. I thought that was the most interesting thing. <laughs> I see the that. cat with the human face uh, wins the prize now. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have, friend? Uh, we have this lovely artist, Kate Renee, who um, does wonderful pieces on plywood and then resins them. She has a really artful touch, and her signature is a little black eye. Oh. So. And some great t-shirts down uh, here as well. Fantastic t-shirts. Donnie Gettinger is in our booth, and he is in charge of doing our interactive um, right out, right now, outside the booth, we have um, Battle Ducks, which is a version of Battle um, Battleship. Okay. Oh, my, yeah. yeah so you sunk, you sunk my Battle Duck. Oh, so yeah. it's oh the duck version of Battleship. Uh, uh, people okay. love playing it. Okay. It's fun. We have a lot of prints for people to pick up by Crystal and Amy Rice is new to the booth. My cousin is a potter, so this is a real cake. I it I, I, it, I didn't want to touch that. I wasn't <laughs> quite sure was that real or not. There's there that show. Is it cake? I wasn't sure. <laughs> is that actually a cake? And then uh, look at these earrings. See, there's a food wearing, thing. Yeah. What, 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 what do we have there? Uh, well, a lot of folks are wearing the corn dog earrings around the fair. And um, if you don't, if you already have your corn dogs, you can get cannolis, <laughs> um, pickles. <laughs> we also have tuna sandwiches. Oh, I'm like getting so excited, <laughs> knocking everything down. You'll tied logs. Uh, so a variety of different food type earrings. And throughout this segment, I'm noticing, is there anyone in your family not artistically uh, uh, talented? Everyone that it seems in your family has an artistic uh, flair to them. Um, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, they do. No, nobody not talented in your family. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. This is going well. uh, and finally, what's this, my friend? What's down oh, here? This is a little. Uh, I do these and bra prints. So. Um, this is a print. It's a silk screen. It's a rainbow girl, and she's printed on orange linoleum. I love so that. Re repurposed, that. Um, you know, recycled yeah. stuff. Absolutely. Recreated. Well, give it up for Jeannie, everybody. You can find <laughs> Jeannie at the West End Market, cream of the crop artists. Dot com uh, for more. You can find them on social as well. We're going to take a break. Stephanie Hansen's coming up. Lori's back. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to talk. Go mute. Oh, we're going to go. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's right. Uh, Stephanie, speaking of, I, Stephanie Hansen isn't coming up. Stephanie Hansen is uh, going to be here in a little bit. But fair flashback time. This was just last year. This just last year. Melissa Peterman and Jerry O'Connell from uh, two game shows on our station came in here, uh, came to the State Fair for the very first time. Here's a little fair flashback with those two. Is that a cat or a microphone? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. It's in honor of Bob Barker. I, I, oh, I know. I know. R.I.P. Too soon? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Jason, this is so exciting for me. This is the first time I am meeting you in person, person. in the flesh. And I want to say, in person, uh, you wear so much makeup. <laughs> And you wear somewhat I'm sunscreen. joking. <laughs> I, have, I put a lot of sunscreen on. I keep getting... Uh, worried about his... He, I he, do. He, Here, look. I keep there we getting, go. Like, what? Getting, like, things, like, please what? Be careful. Look, I had, like, a little, like... No, not my stomach. Uh, oh. There, like, uh, Did you notice we were getting your abs? Oh. We're that age now. we got to worry about that crap. Nobody was looking at that, by the way. No, you look great. You look no. great. Oh. Melissa... M Melissa will be back. Uh, Melissa will be back this uh, coming Sunday. She'll be doing a special appearance. We'll have more information on that. Uh, she'll be uh, talking about the brand new season of uh, her show, Person, Place, or Thing. And I'll be out here as well. That's coming Sunday. I'll give you more details uh, in a little bit. But right now, oh, Stephanie Hansen is back. Our foodie queen, host of Taste Buds right now, uh, is the queen of many things. She's the queen of cooking, and she's also the queen of canning. That's right. I said canning. Take a look. Okay. I think you might actually have a state fair <laughs> problem. Uh, I don't think you still. Look, look at those ribbons. That's an issue. That's a. That's okay, a, Sonia. That's a problem. <laughs> don't you think that's a problem? Well, I don't want to judge your state fair worthiness, but <laughs> has anybody ever asked you if you needed to get an intervention from the state fair? Yeah, I think my husband <laughs> asked a lot. This might be too many ribbons. So can you tell me how many entries you have in this year's State Fair? I 
have around 87 that I'm planning to make. Now, whether I make that many, but that's the plan right now. 87 State Fair entries. I really love the fair. My sister and I used to go a lot, and we'd walk around, and we were like, hey, we could do that, we could do that. So then 2010, I started entering. I entered in the Honey Building my first year and got my first ribbon, and I have been hooked ever since. Canning, pickling, seed art, mosaics. I mean, you syrup, honey, you've done it all. Did I miss anything? Well, I have two new entries this year. I'm doing crop art, so I took a crop art class this year, and I'm entering did. it in the novice category. Okay, hey, this is a novice, because this looks pretty good. How long did it take you? It took me about 40 hours. So this might be my first and last, I'm not sure. Was but, it hard? Uh, you know, it really wasn't hard. It was just time consuming. This is a family of overachievers. I'd like to point out that their dog has even won a ribbon. He's cute. You want a ribbon. You want a ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> you want a ribbon. You're going to go ahead and make your cranberry relish. While you're doing that, I just have to ask you the story about the year your dog ate your state fair entries. Weedy was a sweet dog, but she was a devil in the kitchen. I had all of my state fair entries lined up on the counter. And um, I you know, left the room probably for five seconds, came back in, and I've got rolls all over the floor, and Weedy is as quickly as possible eating everything in sight. Oh my gosh. Hang on one second, Stephanie. I, I think it for the audience at home to really understand that, we might need to do a reenactment video real quick. Of Weedy eating the rolls? Well, yeah, you'll play Weedy, hold on. Here. Weedy, no, no. I'm not a state No. <laughs> I don't know how to look guilty. I don't think she actually feels guilty. What do you think? I don't think so either. You want another cookie? Gosh, these are good. We are going to try to beat 27 ribbons this year. No competition, no pressure. If just Joe Schmo off the street wants to compete, how do they do it? How did you start? So just go ahead and register. Like I, when I took the crop art class, the instructor, Marta was telling us, you know what? Enter it. Even if it doesn't turn out, enter it. We're going to have you on the show on Monday, and we're going to see at that point how many blue ribbon entries you've won, or even any ribbons, really. I don't even care if you if you place. That's a big deal. Ribbon's a ribbon. I just Yes. It. So how many are we trying to beat? Like, what's your record? Uh, the last two years, I've gotten 27 ribbons. Okay. So I'm, I'm hoping to get more this year, but again, I just have fun doing it. You and, are amazing. Right? Thank you for having us in your house, Sonia. I cannot wait to see what you win. Okay, and maybe the cranberry chutney, right? Yeah. I can say I stirred it. There you Award go. Award winning state fair cranberry chutney stirrer right here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da. Stir, baby, stir. Stir. And joining me live now is the canning queen herself, Stephanie Hansen. You guys. That was so fun with her in her kitchen. Sonia you, is the next Blue Ribbon Baker. Like, I can't, I already know. You I, said that back there. Yes, That's a she's big... backstage. We've got some of her cranberry chutney that we made, and we can tell you how she placed. She is no joke. She entered Look the crop you. art. She entered the honey. She was like prize-winning vegetable, prize-winning jam, jellies, chutneys, honeys, cookies, I mean, it's just like it's crazy all the stuff she entered. I, I've known you. I know. I'm very excited. You are very. <laughs> I, I'm I'm like a slow turtle right now. And you are, I have never, I rarely have I seen you this excited about somebody. I am a canner. I'm a pickler. The love and the care that goes into all this stuff. And everyone lined up at the fair when it's time to bring in your entries. And then, like, that lady that was here before you, her blueberry thing only won third place. It's competitive. Did you see how beautiful those uh, were? I ate one of those. Oh, my They're word. Really, I got some on my shorts. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. No, it is a real special thing that happens and all these canners and bakers and picklers that we can have like 
the highlight here. I'm so excited. I, I can tell. Yeah. And I'm excited because you're excited. It's a live reveal, you guys. Okay. We're going to see if she's beat her record. There we her go. Her state fair winning record. Sonia Weber. We're going to have her up next. What she said. She's going to come up a little bit later, but next, we're going to take a break. We'll give Sonia a moment to relax and yes. enjoy because we give our guests air conditioning to, to get ready in this heat. When we come back, though, he is a music reviewing icon. He has been at the Minnesota Star Tribune since 1974. I'm talking about John Bream. We're gonna the talk legendary. Legendary. John Bream. And the legendary Lori. A fun conversation about music when we return. Day two at the fair. Day five of the fair. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Well, we're back on stage. I'm joined again by my buddy, uh, Lori Bargini. Music is a huge part of the State Fair and a huge part of uh, Lori's life. Big name grandstand acts uh, to the up and coming artists, uh, musicians playing across all stages of the fairgrounds. It's happening every year. Uh, our next guest has been covering music for the newly named Minnesota Star Tribune since, he may not like that I say this, since the year I was born. Give it up for the icon himself, from the Star Tribune, John Bream, everyone. Right. Hi, buddy. Hi, Jason and Lori. Thank you. You know what, John? You've been to more concerts than anyone we know. Do you f do, do you feel it, John? Do you feel like you've been probably you've probably been to more concerts than anyone in this state? Well, I feel it when everyone asks the cliche question: "What's the best concert you've ever been?" Yeah, to? I won't ask that it. question, John. Mm -hmm. I'll try to be a professional for you. Thank you. Yeah. What, is, John? Can I uh, let me start off here? Do music acts, because, uh, you know, for uh, restaurants and culture, uh, Minnesota is sometimes unfairly referred to as flyover country or, we're li oh, nothing's going on. But the Minnesota State Fair attracts year after year some really, really big names that you would maybe not expect a state fair to get. Do our, In your experience when you're talking to these people, do they get how big uh, this oppor not opportunity, but how big of a thing the State Fair is. Some of them do, the ones that are well informed, like both Blake Shelton and Chance the Rapper made a big fuss about Minnesota State Fair, said Minnesota State Fair, it's the biggest fair there is. They both knew it, someone had filled them in, obviously. Okay. And Blake has played here before. Yes. And so has Chance. Chance was an opening act for Macklemore several years ago. Oh, I forgot about that. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, Lori has some questions. Um, oh. <laughs> this is how they do it you, on TV. They I was pull it say, out of their bra. I know. We missed it. We were on some cover video. Yes, Lori sorry. pulled that out of her shirt. Uh, that, but no, I love that you're part of this conversation because you are a music lover. And I know John used to be on the radio show all the time. So Yeah. Okay. So my question is... Are uh, these polyester questions? These are polyester <laughs> questions. So there's this uh, guy named Steven Sanchez playing the grandstand on Saturday night. I'm intrigued. Everything I've read about him, but I would like you to, because there are still seats available for this show, and if you're coming out, this could be an amazing date night for I've you. I've never heard of him. Yeah. You will go from intrigued to obsessed after you see Steven Sanchez. Because? Why, John? He's, he's 21 years old. He's from Sacramento, California, and he is like the son of Roy Orbison and Patsy Cline, and he comes across like young Elvis like Elvis in the late 50s. He is so exciting, has the moves, he has the young women swooning. Oh, I'm swooning just watching this video, my <laughs> gosh. Settle down, Lori, wow. settle down. Wow. No, I, this, is, this is him right here, Steven Sanchez. And Don't this, you love discovering a 21-year-old, too? I, I, this is great, I, I honestly never heard of This song, it. Until I Found You, a, a modest hit, and Elton John loved the song so much, he invited Sanchez on stage at Glastonbury last year to sing that song during Elton's show. One of his many farewell shows. I know you guys are we talked enamored about that. with farewell yeah. shows. And Elton, for people that don't know, just to go off on it, Elton, you don't always hear about it, he knows, he reaches out to these young yes, stars, yes. doesn't he, John? Yeah, right. absolutely reaches out to him and befriended him and is giving him some career advice. Let's talk about some of the shows uh, coming up. Ludacris and T-Pain, Motley Crue. Motley Crue we were talking about earlier. They 
could she put on a good show? Well, I don't know. I think they're a little past their prime. <laughs> I set you up perfectly, John. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, Mick Mars, their guitarist, has left the band. It wasn't mm -hmm. clear whether he left voluntarily or was let go because he's got health issues. And so this is the first time we'll see the replacement guitarist, John Five. We know that Tommy Lee will be exciting. I know Lori's excited to see him. Like him. Watch his tumbling drum kit. But... Th you know, can Vince Neil sing anymore? I don't know. What do you think, generally speaking, of this of the lineup this year? But to be honest, and, yeah. And I get paid to complain. Yes. I would say it's one of the lesser lineups, but it's not the fair's fault. It's a matter of competition. Yeah. There's so much competition now between the casinos, the festivals, Live Nation, AEG, arenas. And you're looking at trying to fill 10 specific days and have a diverse lineup with different genres. It's very, very challenging. Plus, your capacity is smaller than an arena. It's smaller than Treasure Island Casino. So it's, it's very difficult to compete for the acts. We have 30 seconds. Do you have one more uh, uh, shirt question? Yeah, tell us why John Party, who I think is playing one night at the fair. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Why is he so loved by Minnesotans? Because he came here early in his career, 2012 or so, and people fell in love with him. He worked his way up. He developed one from clubs to opening acts to now he's headlining at the grandstand. Yeah. Yes, John love Party. a story like that. Nobody is better than this guy. Give it up for John Bream, everybody. You can read all of his articles about the local music scene in the Minnesota Star Tribune. Follow him on social be uh, media at John Bream. We're going to go into some air conditioning, maybe, when we come back. Back <laughs> in a moment. Welcome back. Hour two. The Jason Show, live at the Minnesota State Fair. Well, uh, as promised, Stephanie Hansen is back. We were talking canning earlier. There's a little bit of um, a little bit of an asterisk to this segment. Uh, Stephanie, will you uh, explain? I will. Yeah. There's a little wrinkle. So Sonia's here, but she was so excited, she might have overheated a little bit. So yeah. we've got her in the green room. But honestly, her hype woman Maria, who was there on the day that we filmed the package, is here to fill in. Her sister's here. Her family's here. Because we have the big reveal. Yes. First of all, this is the cranberry chutney that we made in that segment that she entered into the state fair. And Maria, do you have a follow-up? Do we know how this did? This particular one, I don't, I won a ribbon. It did. I, it, I, I think it won a notes. second place. I, look, it, I think so. Well, she's got notes, but I think it won second place. It was a cranberry chutney. Let's go, so Second place. Okay. Now, the big reveal, are you ready for the timpani? I the am ready. 29 ribbons was her award-winning number before this year's 2024 Minnesota State Fair. Maria, how many ribbons did Sonia win this year? Sonia won 35 ribbons! Yeah. 35. Sonia! I mean, she is like... Uh, we all have loved Mar Marjorie Johnson. She's been our Blue Ribbon Baker for forever. But Sonia is coming up in the ranks. Well, that's good. I've never met Marjorie. So Sonia can be my Marjorie. Oh, I've yes! never, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, next I've, gen Marjorie. Yeah, next gen Marjorie. She, can, uh, a general, general question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can answer this. Sure. Uh, why is canning. You, in your theory, why is canning making a comeback? Because during COVID, we all like were getting back to our home economic roots, and we were having more pantry items and having to learn how to do more with our vegetables because we didn't have the opportunity to go to the grocery store every day. Because so it really started to make a comeback. And like these peppers that have peppers and onions would be things that she had from her garden. And if you pickle or can them, they're going to last longer, and you can not have to run to the store all the time. Maria. Or Stephanie, you can answer this uh, because in, in uh, for Sonia, what is her secret? Is it her technique? Is it the care she puts in? Is it all of the above? What do you what do you think? It, what do you think, Maria? No, You're the hype woman. Sonia Weaver's secret sauce. Like that girl is curious. She is interested, and she enters things that she has never tried before. And she, she wins. is an anomaly. She is a hybrid. She went and took like a what? class on crop art. 
and she had a crop art entry this year. She did not win. It was an Elmo. You can see it in the crop art booth. Crop art is really a super skilled thing, but she really like went and took a class so she could enter that category. 82 <laughs> categories she entered. That's Her house, she, she makes there were chapstick. ribbons everywhere. She makes cream. She enters the honey she building. She makes chapstick? <laughs> yes. the, to enter the honey competition. I I, and I, makes I, the bees, the honey. It's she so mosaics. crazy. Yes. Everything. Oh, she had tile, everything. I can barely make green <laughs> giant microwaved broccoli. She, and she's making yes. her own chapstick. And she will just tell you she's a really curious person. She likes to learn things. She likes what? to learn how, how to make things. What for you? Maria, do you can? Or are you just can adjacent? She's can adjacent. <laughs> You're can adjacent. She's just the hype okay. woman. I'm, I'm a You're hype just, woman. Oh, that's fine. You're doing a great job, but you can things like, yes, like yes, a yes. pilgrim woman. Yes. What's the hardest thing that you have canned? That sounds like a personal question. No, but. honestly, for me, it's pickles. Because pickles can get soggy. They're not great. I think the weirdest thing to can, but also it's delicious, is corn. Yeah, like this time of year when you can pickled take all corn, pickled corn, or just canning corn so that you can use it in your freezer pantry later. Oh, that I don't mind. The pickled corn. Oh I don't no, know. it's good. It's it like is? salsa. Yes, yes. Do you yes. have some? Do you have you made them? I have made pickled corn. Would you like me to make you some pickled corn? I would. I mean, not today. I want you to finish the segment, but would later. you like Sonia to make you some? Pickled I would love corn. if Sonia made I mean, when she's really, yeah. That's the highlight. When that's the, the heat highlight. isn't getting yes. all of us. Yes, I would. I would We're love all that. Melting. Well, yeah. Sonia's watching from our green room. Congre audience, give it up for Sonia, Pipe Sonia! Woman Maria, Woo! and Stephanie. You will be hearing a lot more about Sonia, trust me. Yes, Or you trust will. Stephanie. Uh, and you can remember that you met her on the Jason Show first. That's right. That's right. We're going to take a break. More great spotlights from our Minnesota State Fair when we return on this humid day out here. We'll be right back. So if you're coming out here, make sure you get some uh, some water there. Well, the Minnesota State Fair is home to countless local businesses. And since this hour of the show is focused on our home state, we don't feed this one out to our national affiliates. We wanted to take time. This is why I was excited to do it, to highlight some great local companies, because we can't really do that anymore on our normal show, uh, especially the ones featured at the fair. In today's business spotlight, it's Craftsman's Choice. Experts in exterior remodeling of your home joining us is the president of craftsman's choice audience give it up for ben everybody hi ben thank you, thank you for being yeah, here uh ben let me start off with a compliment we're really loving you today because you built the fox 9 green room uh with air conditioning so we think did. on behalf of on behalf of all of us <laughs> you are our favorite person today ben <laughs> thank you I always like an origin story, whether it's a movie. Uh, I love entrepreneurs. How did, how did this start? How did your business start? Uh, it started with a series of bad life choices that led me, <laughs> led me to be I on. I love a, a segment that starts with bad <laughs> life choices. Yeah. Led, led me to be up on a rooftop and figured out I probably don't want to be doing roofing for the rest of my life. So we, how long had you been doing roofing at that point? Uh, about ten minutes. <laughs> 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 but we got into siding and came across James Hardy Siding, the manufacturer uh, of cement siding, and that's when things really took off. Let me, let me, and this is my job, let me be uh, the representative for the audience. Uh, I, I live in a condo. I don't know a lot about siding. Uh, I don't know the first thing. That's why I'm glad you're here. W what, do, what do I need to know? Uh, what are the people watching at home? Is, is there a difference? Because I lived, you know, my house in the 80s was that metal siding. This does not look like that. What do we need to know about this? So, so James Hardy siding is 90% cement and sand, 10% of this cellulose wood fiber. <clears throat> what is this? Cellulose wood fiber. That makes it so it's, it's not brittle like a thin piece of cement would be. So okay. it's going to withstand hail. And the advantages over things like cedar is that these little guys over here, the woodpeckers. Yeah, Eric, can we like take it? it? Now, this is, I thought our engineers w were the hardest working people today. I think the guy in the woodpecker outfit is actually the hardest working. Ben, Ben, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to give him a bonus today, aren't we, Ben? An air conditioning bonus. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But no, joking aside, you... Uh, you guys test this, right? You test to make sure the siding... I'm fascinated by this. Oh, look at this house. 
Ben, is this your house? It's not my house. No, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, but this is some of the siding that you do, right, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. That, so the benefit is that you get the look of wood. You can do shakes. You can do board and batten. You can do anything you, you can do with wood, but with cement. So you don't have to put up with some of the maintenance issues that are associated with Holy uh, crap, wood. you're setting it on fire. Look at that, Ben. What's, what, what's this test? What are, you, what, are you, what are you testing here? So I mean, it seems separate, obvious, but... Uh, four separate sidings. We tested engineered wood, uh, vinyl, hardy, and then cedar. And the hardy uh, Look at withstood, that. withstood the test. Nothing. There. Is this, maybe I, if you've already answered a, this in a different way, I apologize. Oh, here's a woodpecker. <laughs> anyway, um, if you've already answered this, has, the, has this technology, has the advancement of the siding, has it gotten better over the last decade or so? Yeah, so the, the current formulation has been around since 1981. Okay. James Hardy invented the category. They're on their seventh generation of siding. So they keep improving. They've split the country up into the northern and southern climates. To, and our board here in Minnesota is specifically engineered for our climate. Uh, where are you located, before we go any farther, where are you located We're at the fair? We're up in Rogers, St. Michael area, but we service the entire metro. The entire area. Where are you at the fair, though? We're right on the corner of Underwood and Judson, right across from the Haunted House. That's right. You can't miss them, especially if you go to the Dairy Good this building just wave i did i always say hi to him as you walk right. by is that where you keep uh, the woodpecker uh, when he's not working is that where he lives we do yeah <laughs> keep him locked up <laughs> <laughs> it's a guitar playing woodpecker i gotta tell you uh now i want to show you ben can we take a look at your handiwork eric walk with me here ben let's go look at the let, let's go look at your handiwork here you built you built our fox you did our fox nine green room here oh this is ben everybody is loving this place right now so this is this is an example of the siding bin? It is, yep. <clears throat> so again, the lap siding, this is the trim. You can duplicate anything you can with uh, with wood siding. Yeah. So. And it looks so it looks great. And this look at that. I wish the woodpecker was back here to try it and see. I love that there's a woodpecker test bin, I'm telling you. I think you. most people this week probably prefer the inside to the outside right now. <laughs> yes. yeah. Give it up for Ben, everybody. Go Thank visit you. Craftsman Choice of the Minnesota State Fair or at Rogers. We'll put more information. Uh, you can see the address right there at the bottom of your screen. We're going to take a break. Our two is wrapping up when we come back. Back in a moment. Thank you, my friend. Welcome back, everybody. To our second hour of the Jason Show, Lori and I are out here. It's time for the two of us to do a shameless company plug. We have our Fox Local, that's our fabulous app, the Fox Local Claw Machine. This is Chalet. She's an intern at the Hennepin County Sheriff's Department. We love them. So Chalet's going to play our uh, claw game. Go ahead and put that coin in there. Uh, put the claw. Do a good strategy wherever you want. There's a fire stick in there. Executive producer Jeff's paycheck is in there. <laughs> Photographer uh, Eric's paycheck is in there. Or a fox. Oh, or oh, 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 do we have it? Oh, no. no. But don't worry, there are no losers on Jason and Lori do a company plug. You get an Amazon fire stick. There we go. There we go. Good luck on your career, my friend. Uh, Lori, I got to say goodbye because, as you know, I start walking to my next job at the next segment. You're the hardest working no. man in the Twin Cities, Jason. No, no that's photographer Eric. Okay, fine, but well, you do start early in the morning I out do. here. I do, I do, girl. Uh, Lori's going to be back with us tomorrow. We're going to be back in just a little bit. Stay with us, everybody. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jason. It's hour two. We're wrapping up the show. As only we can, uh, as you know, when I decided, when they decided to do hour two, I told them, well, at noon, I got to get to the radio station uh, right down at my talk, which is literally on the opposite side of the fairgrounds. So we were going to do uh, a little uh, golf cart situation, but we got in trouble. So now I just have to walk. So this is the walking goodbye of the show. So I just walk by. We're by the corn booth. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello, lady on the back. How are you? Having a good day? Happy fair. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Welcome to your fair day. People enjoying the corn. Oh, you know, somehow, some way, it's not quite as hot out here as it was uh, by the Fox 9 booth. 
Let me see if anyone, if I can just grab somebody's corn and just steal it from them. No, I'm not going to steal a kid's corn. But anyway, uh, it's a great day. Coming up tomorrow, Lori Bargini will be back. Aaron Schwab will be our special guest. And don't forget, on September 9th, on September 9th, it's our 10th season premiere. Hi, go ahead and wave to them. That's fine. Um, and again, I just want to thank our crew who is brave in the hot weather to work today, working their butt off for all of us. Uh, I really, really appreciate them more than ever. I'm going to go take a very cold shower. Jeff, can you find us a shower, please? Oh, that sounded weird. That sounded very weird. But uh, but find a separate cold shower for the two of us. I shouldn't have said it like that. Oh, well. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.